sometimes he just can't get it up high enough on the levelers. So I learned a neat trick. met a very wise man once in my early days of travels who said if you can't go up go down and that's what we're gonna do here hey all Rome town girl here and today I'm bringing you one of my RV tips and tricks videos now this is one I've been meaning to do for a while and if you watch all the way to the end you're gonna understand why my next RV I hope will have automatic levelers because I am getting so tired of being my own automatic leveler. It's good to know how to do this, but oh my God, it definitely is one of the things that makes moving day a pain in the butt. Now, if you're lucky enough to show up at a site that's level, hallelujah. And for those of you that don't know, the main reason you have to level is because of the RV refrigerators and the way they are done. And I'll do a whole video on that at another point in time. But for the purposes of this video, what's important to know is you can completely destroy your refrigerator or even start a fire if your RV is not level. Interesting side note, I am one who gets car sick. So I always get to call shotgun if I'm in the car with a bunch of other people. But it has something to do with my inner ear and I am so aware of when the world is not level. So I've never been able to go on those simulation rides, you know, where you go inside and they show you something on the screen and like you fly in the air or whatever. I, I get so nauseous and I can't go to those really cool places where it's kind of off kilter and water's running uphill and yeah. I can't tolerate those. So who knew when I started doing my RV life that I am like the princess in the pea. I can detect just being a fraction, not level. I, I feel like I'm in a fun house. So for me, it's super duper important to be level. Forget the refrigerator. My queasiness quotient <laughs> needs to be level. So when I started, I started with these orange guys. And it's not that they don't work well, but you've got to use a whole bunch of them like a Lego build. And depending on how many you have, you can only elevate so high. And so then I moved on to these yellow ramp-like ones, which I prefer. This is what I use. And you can see it gives you three levels of going up. But again, this is the maximum up here. And sometimes you're going to find yourself in places where you're going to need more elevation than that. So I have a really cool workaround for that. And this was something that someone showed me early on. So the first thing that I find really helpful is having a large leveler. And I got this guy for a dollar at the 99 cent store. And I don't know if all RVs should look more closely, but I've got this nice little um, molding on the side which allows me you know to set this on the molding and check and see how level I use the center one so I check four quadrants I'll check the passenger side the front and the rear and then I'll check the driver side the front and the rear that's actually pretty good Not so good. That's another project. Let's go up just a smidge. That's pretty good. And I can see really easily where I'm off. So then I have to break out the must-have tools for this project. I've got a small shovel and a rake trowel. I don't know what this is called, but it works really good when the, it's really rocky and hard to dig in the dirt. First thing I do is I take my shovel and I'll do an outline of the tires where I need to dig the hole. Sometimes it's in the front. This time you'll see it's going to be the rear tires. The 
reason I do this is because I'm going to be backing the RV up a few feet to give me clearance to dig the hole and now I know where I need to dig the hole. So the next thing I do is take something that's the same length as the tires. I can use my handy dandy large leveler. I can use a stick. I've done rocks. I mean anything I can find. And I'm just doing this as a precaution in case I didn't do a great job of outlining the where the tires are. Now I use my handy dandy tools and I dig. And I dig. And I dig. And I dig. Sure, I can laugh about it now, but I don't laugh so much while I'm doing it. So after I think I've got the holes just right, then it's time to test. So what I'll do next is I'll roll the RV up just to the edge of where the hole is. And if I need levelers to make the other tires go higher, I will place them. In this case, it was definitely both my rear tires needed to go down and my front end needed to go up and I couldn't get it high enough just using these levelers. And then it's showtime! And so after I've got all tire placement as I think it needs to be to be level, I do a second walk around using my, my large leveler, same four quadrants, and I just pray that the center guy is completely perfect. Now, if I were gonna be somewhere for just a day or two, I might not go through all this craziness as far as digging holes, but if I'm gonna be somewhere for, you know, five days, 14 days or longer, then absolutely I invest the effort and elbow grease and blood and sweat and tears and screaming and cursing because there's nothing like having an absolutely level RV when you're in one place for a while. Well, I hope I've shown you something you hadn't considered before. And if you have the opportunity to try it out yourself, be sure to let me know how it went. And don't blame me because the digging part sucks. And like I said before, next RV, if I can afford it, please, I would love automatic levelers. Oh, I don't want to forget to mention, if you found this video helpful, or at the very least entertaining, don't forget a thumbs up, a comment below, and always another subscriber is much appreciated. See you guys next time.